welcome to the Business and Bubbly podcast. This is the place for women in business who are on the journey of building their big ideas and want to have fun along the way. It's for those of us who also know we aren't meant to do business or life alone. Hi, I'm Charity Majors, your host and the founder of Business and Bubbly. Think of this kind of like the, can I pick your brain chats that you always wanted to have with those who are doing epic things, plus business besties, hype girls, and getting into massive action towards your next big idea, all the same place. Oh, and bubbles, because if you're not having fun along the way, you're not doing it right. Together, we'll unlock what it means to be seen, known, heard, and championed all along the ups and downs of entrepreneurship and being a woman in business building big dreams. Each week, I'll bring you a quick sip business tip as well as interviews from top experts that make you feel like you're getting bottle service for your business. We're having the raw and real conversations and chatting about all the things, the messy middle, the pivots, scaling, the good days and the bad days, because here we do real. It's where we can work hard, play hard, cry it out and dance it out all at the same time without being judged. This is the place where we are in the arena together and we are each other's biggest fans because most of us have enough comments from the cheap seats. It's where our too much is par for the course and where the gaps of our not enough are filled in by the other epic women that are around us. It's where we can be unapologetic about the mission we are on, about the big dreams on our heart and the business we are building without having to be perfect or have it all together or even pretend to. It's a supportive community where business is being done amongst like-minded women because when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen. It's a place where you have the support around you to get out of your comfort zone and go after your big ideas because even when you fail forward or when you reach the top, you know it won't be alone. Also, if you know anything about me, you'll know that I'm obsessed with creating platforms that lift up other women to be seen and heard and known. So with that in mind, I'd like to invite you to list your business on our directory called Find Women in Business. All you've got to do is text the word directory to 833-231-8098 and I'll text you the link back to get your free listing. This is also a great way to connect with other women in business from around the world, so definitely check it out. And now let's get to the good stuff. Grab a glass of your favorite beverage, Prosecco, bubbly water, or whatever your flavor is and let's dive in. Are you with me? Here we go. Hello, friend. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Charity Majors, and I'm so excited that you're here today. Today's episode, we are going to be chatting about what it looks like to become a leader and who you need to become in the process. Now, if you are listening to this show, you are a woman in business, you may have a team that you're leading, or maybe you're on social media, you're trying to grow your influence and your impact. And I'm actually going to go over, this is going to be a two-part episode. We're going to do one part now with this one, and then the second part, you'll have to tune into the next episode. And we're going to go over six different rules on who you need to become as a leader. And I love the concepts. These are actually coming from a mentor of mine, Russell Brunson. He is one of the co-founders of ClickFunnels. He's the author of multiple books, and one of them that I'm going to actually, you'll have an opportunity to grab a free copy of, you just pay shipping. But the book that this is coming from, which I've been able to really implement this within Business and Bubbly and within other businesses that I've had, it's called Expert Secrets. And if you have not read that book, or if you've not gotten the book, like go get it right now. Like seriously, like go to charitymajors.com slash expert secrets. That's my affiliate link where you can get the book for free and all you do is pay for shipping. But this is hands down one of my favorite books when it comes to really creating not only who you're going to be as a leader, but creating a movement of people that will pay you for your advice, um, that will really create a culture and just like, you know, 
like want what it is that you're doing and want to be a part of what it is that you're doing as an expert in your industry. So hands down, grab the book, go to charitymajors.com. That's my name, Charity Majors slash Expert Secrets. That's the name of the book and you can get the book for free. All you do is pay shipping. But now I want to go into this episode. We're going to talk about the first three rules of who you need to become as a leader within a movement, within your business, within your company, um, within someone who is growing their influence. Um, And I just love these, um, the six rules that we'll go over. The first three are going to be in this episode. The next three are going to, or the next three rules are going to be in the episode right after this. So make sure that you listen to both. All right, so rule number one. So actually, there's this really great quote by Jay Abraham, and he said that people are silently begging to be led. And there's another quote, and I don't know who this is from, but everyone else is waiting for someone else. Everyone is waiting for someone else to go first. And I I really, really believe that that's so true because so many times I know from even me in my past and different things that I've done, I didn't really know that I was a leader or if maybe I had natural leadership talents or gifts. I mean, I'm a firstborn. <laughs> like that just automatically makes me a leader because I have two little brothers. Um, you know, all of a sudden it was I was a team captain in volleyball in high school. But what did that really like? Okay, I'm like team captain, but I didn't really understand what it looked like to lead. And so when it comes to like building your audience, when it comes to growing your influence, maybe you're leading a movement, um, you are in business and you have a team or you're, you know, you are a brand online and you're really wanting to lead people within to this thing that you're doing and really serve them as a servant leader. Um, understand that people are silently begging to be led and people are really drawn to those of us who are certain with where we're going, with what we're doing. And if their mission aligns with your mission, you better believe that they're going to be following you. And so rule number one is who you need to become as a leader is to become an attractive character and live the life that your audience wishes they could live. And I love this, but there's a few different elements as far as what creates an attractive character, um, as well as a, a few different identity elements or identity, you know, kind of little personalities, if you will. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the elements. And again, this is coming from the book Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. And these are things that I've been able to implement within Business and Bubbly, and it has absolutely blown up, which is so much fun. But the first element it to include is a backstory. The second element is a parable. And I'll go over these in just a second. The third one is character flaws. And the fourth one is polarity. So within these elements, the backstory is kind of the like, oh, well, before things, you know, like it was like, well, things weren't always the way that they are now, right? Like for me, I had been in, you know, business and in networking before and took a little break to be a mom and was really wanting to, was, was really craving community again and started to dive back into networking. And what I found, especially as a modern woman in business is they were all like, all the networking rooms were filled with, you know, like these like salty sales, <laughs> salty salesmen that were like, hey, here's my bad 30 second story and my robotic 30 second, you know, pitch. And hey, here's my bad business card. And just like, you know, like you just like feel like you just get business cards like shoved in your face all the time. And I even had guys hitting on me like, yeah, we should go get coffee, girl. Like, yeah, I'll connect with you. And I'm just like, oh, dear God, like this is not like anything of what's happening. And because of my background, because I've been in this digital marketing world and the social media world, and especially like empowering women and, um, you know, speaking and writing and all this different stuff, what I found in those old dated networking groups was that a lot of what they were talking about and a lot of how they were doing business was old and outdated stuff. Like they weren't keeping up with the times and they weren't keeping up with what's working now. And I, I like seeing the difference in that. I'm like, no, I like, I can't stay in these rooms. Like these are gonna, (laughs) I'm gonna like stifle. I'm gonna like die in these rooms. And so I got on a mission to create a rooms for women who didn't have to worry about the salty sleazy salesman hitting on them, but also that was for modern women in business and what it looks like to connect for us as women. And 
And apparently, you know, you guys know a little bit of backstory if you listen to the first few episodes of this, but it took off like crazy. And apparently I wasn't the only one that was feeling that there was something new and needed when it comes to women in business and networking and really creating and fostering local community. And so that's a little bit of the backstory, right? So you can see how this this character for me as a modern woman in business that I'm able to utilize the backstory of that to create this movement that I'm doing, right? So when you heard some of the parables, some of the stories, right? The salt deal salesman, like the guy hitting on me, like I'm not going to stay in these rooms. So there's these different parables or stories that go along with the backstory. Now, when it comes to the character flaws, like I was mentioning in the elements, the character flaws, these are the part where, you know, like for me, like I didn't want to like, I, I didn't want to stay in the rooms of what it looked like for sales guys to just shove business, you know, like um, business cards in my face. But character flaws also for me, what I really share in our business and bubbly meetings and in our gatherings is that for me, like, man, like it was also when I started business and bubbly, it was also really vulnerable to be able to start and just say, okay, like I'm going to start this thing for a group of women because for me in my past, I've also been really hurt by women and I've been, you know, like gossiped about and hurt and, um, and just, I know just if you're, if you've been hurt by other women, like raise your digital hand and it can be a really scary place to like put yourself into a room of women, not sure if they're really going to support you and not sure if they're going to hurt you or not sure like what the outcome is going to be. You know, if you put yourself out there and say, man, like these are my hopes, my dreams, and this is what I'm up to. And so for me, like the character flaws, like I've been hurt before by women and it was a scary place and a vulnerable place to say, oh, but I'm actually going to create this place (laughs) for women. And I'm kind of scared about that and I could get hurt and, um, You know, I even had a couple other networking groups where local where I'm at who they started talking negatively about business and bubbly and oh, like who does she think she is? She's just doing all these events and (laughs) all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, that's like high school. But anyways, anyways, so there's different character flaws that go along with this attractive character. And then the polarity, right? So you heard some of the polarity within the story of like some people might be offended that, that I talked about, you know, like, oh, the bad 30 second story and here's my business card and like salty old salesmen and old ways of doing things. Like some people might be offended by that, but if the shoe fits, like don't kill the messenger, right? But that creates polarity. And as far as other networking groups that have been around for years and years and years, but what it actually did it set, is it set me apart. It set business and bubbly apart as a space for modern women. And they loved that, right? And so there was a bit of polarity, even if someone <laughs> didn't like it. And I love what, what they say in the book is, um, like, if it's not going to create polarity, then you're not going to create raving fans. If it's not going to upset some people, then it's also not going to create raving fans because it just is going to kind of be in the middle, like a little vanilla, um, not super stand out ish. Okay. Um, so then when it comes to the, being the attractive character and, uh, the identity of this person, um, there is a few different ways that they can go about it, right? They can be the leader, they can be the adventurer or the crusader, they can be the reporter or the evangelist, or they can be the reluctant hero. Um, And Russell Brunson does a really great job at diving into those different things within the book. So again, make sure you grab a copy. But the idea is that when it comes to this attractive character, when it comes to this person of the brand, whether you are the brand or whether like for Business and Bubbly, the community is the brand, um, right? The collaboration that we have going on is the character, the way that women get to stand up and leave, like that's the character, um, right? And the gap between like the women who are going at business and life alone compared to the connection and community and collaboration that we have, like there's got to be a gap between where they are and where they see themselves. And that helps move them into action to become a part of your thing or to purchase your product or to become a, like to be a part of your community or whatever that might mean. So it's really important to live a life and to be able to show your audience 
what they wish that they could do, right? So within Business and Bubbly, women are collaborating, they're doing business together, and those are that's a culture that we've set, that when business, um, when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen, and when business is being done among women in the room, we get to create our own ecosystem to where no matter what's happening in, in the in the economy, no matter what's happening you know, outside, it's like, you need a referral, girl, we got you, and money is ex- being exchanged within the room and within the members, and it's creating this incredible, profitable ecosystem where every single woman is being supported in her business. And that's what, right, so now solopreneurs, women who might be feeling alone, maybe who maybe they need some more clients or they they haven't been able to, you know, like figure out how to be able to book themselves solid. It's like, this is what's happening over at Business and Bubbly. Like, right, there's a gap there. And so it helps encourage to get them in the room and to be a part of the community. Now, number two, rule number two of who you need to become as a leader is to maintain absolute certainty. And I love what what Russell writes in the book, and he says that the person with the most certainty wins. And it's not um, self-confidence, but it's if you want to make an impact, you have to be certain because certainty is what draws people to leaders and to experts. And for me, it's like, okay, like when I get to help women like be up on stage and create their chapters or grow in their leadership or really start to own the voice that they have and own the message of their business, when they become certain in their message, man, it, it makes a huge, huge difference. And there's a shift that happens, right? You can, you can kind of tell when people, when people, with people's body languages as they walk up to the room, it might be their first or second event and they like are sharing about their business or you maybe are a six month goal or a big hope and dream that they've had. And at first they might walk up in the, up to the room and like be a little shy and a little timid and they like are holding the microphone away from them a little bit. And as they become a part of the community and as like the message, like one of the big messages that we share um, is that on average, people meet about 10,000 people in their lifetime, right? So if you can imagine the Rome Coliseum, that seats about 10,000 people, but most of us have enough people in the cheap seats, right? So in our room, in business and bubbly, we are the women that are in the arena together and we are the ones that are in the front row. We are each other's biggest fans, right? So as you can like hear that verbiage, you can hear the certainty in my voice that there's no room and there's no space. There's like, it's not allowed to like be a hater and to be in the peanut gallery and to be in the cheap seats, like to any single, to any woman in the room, like that's a precedent and a culture that we set within business and bubbly. And I am certain that every single woman in the room gets supported and they get cheered on by the best hype girls because that's the culture that we've set. And so as you can hear, like there's certainty, not only in my voice, but in the culture that we've set of collaboration and community and connection and support. And so no matter if, even if a woman is uncertain when she goes up to the room to share about her business, as she grows in her certainty, as she grows in the messaging of her business, as she grows that, oh my gosh, like Pete, like these ladies like purchase my, you know, like purchase my thing or join my thing. Like as she grows in her certainty, then like she becomes more of that leader to where people are now even drawn to her even more within her business. And so it has been this really, really fun way to be able to see women grow. Um, Now, when it comes to being certain, the more and more that you share your message with others, the more certain that you will become. So part of the reason that we have women in our local chapters come up and share their message, they get to share their signature statement. You know, we do little mini masterminds in the meeting and they get to collaborate about their message or their Instagram bio or different things like that. The more that they are certain as they share their message, the more clear that it gets and the more certain they become in their business. Um, Other things that you can do is, you know, you can start a blog, you can do a podcast like this, share daily, obviously Instagram or Facebook posts um, or any other social media platform that resonates with you. But the more certain that you are that you share your message, even if it's repeating, like if you go to the Business and Bubbly Instagram page, you'll see some repeating messages, but that's because those are things that we are really, really certain on and they have landed and the women have, like that is a part of the message, right? Like you heard me say, like when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen. Like you will see that message and that is something that we are so certain about. Um, 
other, you know, other things like that. Even like this story about the arena and being the biggest fans and the biggest hype girls for each other because we are in the arena. We are in the front row. We are each other's biggest fans. That's a reoccurring message. And those are things that you'll see without the different, throughout the different chapters, throughout our different messages. Um, right. And so my encouragement for you is to practice sharing your message as much as you can and find those key phrases and that will help you grow in your certainty. Now rule number three, and this is the last rule that we'll go over within this episode, then make sure you tune into the next episode as we go over the next three rules of who you need to become to be a leader of a movement or a product or a brand or a service or a company is rule number three is don't be boring. (laughs) Right now I love this one because they have, like you have to be able to keep the attention of those that are watching. And what was really fun as I was developing the message of business and bubbly is that it is this facet of, right, like the personality of business and bubbly. It's this fun hype girl. Like she is like main character energy. Like if you were to, um, you know, watch a movie, like it's like this main character energy. It is, you know, it's um, Reese Witherspoon in... um, not Clueless. (laughs) That's um, the other girl, Alicia, whoever in Clueless. It is Reese Witherspoon in whatever movie that she's the lawyer. It is like, it's this main character energy, but she's bubbly. She's fun. She is like a seven on the Enneagram. If you like a seven or a three on an Enneagram to where she's called the lead from the front of the room, but she's so fun. She's bubbly. She is peppy. She is like everyone's like favorite person. Like that's the personality of business and bubbly. And what was really fun as I was developing this brand voice was I didn't want it to be boring because there's plenty of other women empowerment things that are out there, but they're pretty cliche and they're pretty just common. And I didn't want this to be boring when it came to business and bubbly as I created it. And so like with our, within our memberships, like our girls are called business besties and you know, within our free online group that we have, it's called our squad, you know, and if you just, if you want to be a part of the squad, all you got to do is text the word squad. It's kind of like a Facebook group, but it's actually on a different app and it's cute and it's pink and it's because Facebook is so 2010. (laughs) But anyways, so all you got to do is text the word squad to um, 833-231-8098. I'll text you back the link to be able to join our free online group um, where, again, women are being able, they're able to do business together. They're making weekly connections. I actually send out an email that says, hey, like connect with your girl here from your squad, like jump on a Zoom call, have a quick you know call and just really know who to connect with. Um, right. So the names of it are fun. The events that we do are fun. You know, the, I'm so, so intentional about the environment of how, of what we do when we are, have a business and bubbly event. And it's because we don't want it to be boring. There are plenty of beige, dear God, like beige conference rooms out there and it, environment is stronger than willpower. And so if you walk into a beige conference room, your expectation automatically go, like goes to the level of the environment and goes to the level of the room. And so for me, it was really, really intentional that everything about the places that we host events and the looks of it and the fun balloons or the fun languaging and the fun branding and all this stuff, it's because it cannot be boring. <laughs> like for me, especially as a modern woman in business, it's got to be cute, right? Like as content creators, as women who are building brands and businesses and communities, and selling products online, like it's gotta be cute. Like I, I like cute. So (laughs) my thing had to be cute. And I love that rule number three is don't be boring. Don't be mainstream. So you can take a mainstream idea, but give it that edge, give it that, um, you know, like give it the, the words that are going to spark the, the feeling that you want from your clients, from your customers, from your audience, from those that are coming into your world and into your community. Um, if you can kind of imagine, um, with me, this, like, there's a line, right? Like a, like a line and right in the middle of this line is mainstream, right? Like that's your like women supporting women, like great. Like everyone says that, right? Like 
awesome. Like that's a good idea, but how do we make it like into what's called the prolific, like the money making zone? Like how do I give this concept of women supporting women in edgy feel and edgy language and edgy message that yes it's the same concept but it's in a fun way that and this is um right like so it's not mainstream or it's not like too far like on the bell curve to the end where it's like crazy but it's right in the middle between mainstream and crazy and it's called this prolific zone and that's where the money is, right? So we're taking this mainstream idea but we're giving it an edge. So how can you take your mainstream idea and give the message around it, give the copywriting, the branding, the look of it, the feel of it, right? Don't be boring, how can you give it an edge? And, all right, so it's someone who, all right, they have it, they have inventiveness, um, you know, they, they may want to make a big impact on people, but they have got to do it with an edge and you've got to do it in a way that's going to attract people to you. So it's not mainstream and it's not crazy, <laughs> but it's right in the middle of those two things where it takes that mainstream idea and you give it an edge, you give it a brand voice, you give um, those people in your community a brand identity and a community identity, um, right? That's the sweet spot of where you're going to really, really impact people's lives as well as have your business be profitable, right? So if you do balloons, you know, and you decorate cute spaces and events and you do balloons, like don't just make it about the balloons. Like what do your balloons provide? Like what's like, you know, do you have like fun names for your, the creations that you do, um, right? Who's your ideal client? Like how do they want to feel at their events and um, be able to utilize some of that edgy messaging within your website, within your socials, within your copywriting. And you're going to really attract those people that you love to work with, right? Maybe you're a coach and you know, every, like, it seems like there's a lot of people out there that are doing coaching, which is great. Like coaching is so needed and so necessary, but how are you creating, um, what it is that you're doing in your coaching program or your message? You know, like, don't just say that you're a life coach. Like, what is it that you are helping people achieve or what result are you getting them? How can you create it with an edgy, um, with that prolific languaging that sets you apart from others. Um, and again, when you can do that, that's where there's the most money because it's not mainstream. It's not in the crazy zone, but you find this in between the middle, um, where you are relaying ideas that are unique and people notice, and it's going to be profitable for you. Sound good? All right. And then when it comes to your message, like I mentioned before, you want a little bit of that polarity. So similar to like the crazy and the mainstream, you want your messaging to have a little bit of that polarity. And so for us as modern women in business, like we're not the salty salesman, you know, that's like, here's my business card. And like, like, you know, like we want cute things and we want to be around like fun women and we want to support each other and like we want to stand out and we want to like have our voices be heard and we want to like know that when women in business, like when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen and we want to support other women, right? So it's this different, it's this polarity to where as, you know, maybe the salty sales guy, when he hears this, like, I love you, buddy, but I'm not going to be in the same room as you because you're not my ideal client and I have no desire to do business with salty salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> right? Which it's all right. There's some polarity with that. But what that does is it actually creates raving fans and it creates girls that are like, heck yeah, like I want to be in the fun rooms with the fun girls that are supporting each other and not the cookie cutter networking events or not the cookie cutter rooms with the beige conference rooms that are boring where I want to like poke my eyes out and I'm not receiving any value and there's no like wow and pizzazz to the experience. Like, no, no just my girls. Like if you're listening to this, you're my girl, you know, <laughs> you know, we like to do things a little extra, but it's in that prolific zone, right? Um, so there's just kind of a rule of thumb for every a hundred, for every 100 true fans who follow you, you'll likely get one person who doesn't and that's okay. Like they're allowed to, um, they might be the loudest person. They might do some gossiping. They might kind of try and throw stones at you. Um, but 
you'll, what you'll actually find is that the people that love you, the people that are your true fans, they love your product, your service, like they're going to be the ones that stand up for you. They're going to like, so when I, when I mentioned the, the other networking group that, that kind of like started to talk about, about the different things that we were doing with business and bubbly, what we actually did at the very next event that we had was I, like, I didn't call them out specifically, specifically, but I said, Hey, another group was talking bad about us. So what's our response? So we literally like in the room, I had every single woman find someone else that was in their business that was in their same industry. So if there were two social media marketers, they got together and they took a selfie together. They supported each other online. You know, if there were two coaches, you know, we had them like pair up together and they took it, you know, took fun selfies and supported each other online. So we literally came back. Like our response was literally more support instead of throwing shade, instead of like more gossip, instead of saying, Oh, like don't go to that group or whatever it was like, no, like, we really are about collaboration and we showed it and it was so fun to see social media blow up with all of these women even in the same industry even as competitors support each other and it created this incredible bond and culture in the room and it created so much buzz and so much excitement that we have had a ton of new women come to the room because that's who we are and that's what our culture is about and we were able to come at a negative situation in the opposite you know, in the opposite way. And that's what women were craving because plenty of women, you know, like me, we've had women talk about us or gossip about us or whatever that might mean. And we just got to come at it and show our support regardless of the haters. Um, so as you create fan, just know that you will have people that might not like what you're doing, but that's okay because you just get to love them from afar and focus on your true fans and tro- focus on the business that you're building and the people that you're serving. All right, so those are our first three rules. So if you want to hear the next three then make sure that you tune into the next episode of the show. As always, my friend, I am in your corner. I am one of your biggest fans. Come hang out with us on Instagram at business and bubbly. You'll see all the fun things we have going on. Um, and then if you actually are interested in learning about what it looks like to start a chapter in your area and to really bring this culture and to become this leader that we're talking about, then I actually want you to send me a message on Instagram because I am working on some different fun things about and having, helping other women start chapters in their area and to really bring the supportive culture of business and bubbly into your area. But what it also does is it not only creates platforms for women to be seen and known and heard within their business. But as a chapter director, what it does is if you know that you're called to lead from the front of the room, if you know that you're called to grow your influence on a part-time basis with a really great profitable business model, then I want you to shoot me a message. Let's start a conversation um, and see what we can do to get the culture of business and bubbly where women are linking arms together, where they're, we are creating our own ecosystems, where we are, you know, like showing support when, when shade is being thrown no salty businessmen allowed. We are each other's biggest fans and hype girls. Um, if that sounds like you and you want to lead from the front of the room, then find me on Instagram, shoot me a message at business and bubbly. Let's start a conversation to see if it's a good fit in your area. And if you are, um, would be a good fit to be a chapter director. All right, my friend, make sure you tune into the next episode for the next three rules on who you need to become as a leader. And I will talk to you next time. As always, cheers to your success. so much for listening to the show. I hope it brought some value and some fun into your business and life. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast and even share the episode with a fellow business bestie who you know will love it. It helps us continue to attract top level guests and reach more and more women who are on their journey in business just like you. Remember that when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen. Cheers to your success.